The first question rolling in here is from my man Adrian. Adrian, you need Manscaped and to get a picture. Raiders trade a second for Yannick Ngakwe. So right now the rumor out there is that a team has put an offer on the table for Yannick and it's a second round pick. Personally for me, I don't anticipate the Raiders going out and paying Yannick $17 million plus giving up a second round pick. When a player like Jadeveon Clowney is still out there in free agency, I think the yeah, I think the problem the Raiders run into too is if you do that, you're basically saying we don't think Cleveland Farrell can develop. Correct. Because if you go trade for Yannick Ngakwe, you're keeping him long term as well. Any team that does, they're gonna get him on the tag and then re-sign him in the off season. So I don't think it makes sense for the Raiders unless they're pretty confident that Farrell can't develop in. A year in after taking him top five, ah, that feels a little the premature. Team, the team to me that I think has the best chance going out and getting Yannick, it's the New York Jets. Let's go to Logster Gaming. What remaining free agents do you see signing with a team before the season begins? It's a great question, and actually we have a video of the next free agents that we think are going to sign, I guess, soonest. As when we made the video, actually, we had Everson Griffin, and then he signed. So we actually couldn't put Everson Griffin out on the video there's, I believe, six, seven, or eight names on that. So go check it out. It is on the video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. It's a good question, though, because the season's less than a month away. Like, True. if you're a guy like Clowney, Logan Ryan, I know you're prideful. I know you want to make as much money as possible. But at some point, don't you just have to take what you can get? Yeah. Like, we're running out of time here. So I would encourage those guys to sign pretty soon. Shanav M. Broncos trade for Yannick Ngakwe. Shanav, I know you're a big-time Broncos fan. I don't think that they're going to go out and do this move. They already made some key moves to the defensive line in the offseason, and they have Vaughn Miller. I don't see them making this move. I, again, will say I think it's the New York Jets. Yeah, I don't really, you know, every team can use Yannick Ngakwe, sure. but I don't know that they really need him. You know what I mean? Like, they can invest elsewhere. There's better ways for the Broncos to continue to build that roster than to get another premium edge rusher. I, I think continue to build around Drew Locke makes more sense. Ryan Wilson, get a picture. Uh, Melvin and a fourth for Yannick. And will the Chargers be able to sign Keenan and Yannick? So, um, Melvin Ingram, I assume. Yeah, Melvin Ingram and a fourth for Yannick. The Chargers, I don't think, would do that personally. Um, you're paying both of them the same. Yeah. I don't think you're going to – you're not going to pay – 50 combined million for two edge rushers, I don't think. Because yeah. if you do that, you're giving Yannick somewhat close to what Bosa got, right? Like, at least 20 million per year. I mean, that's what he wants. Ah, that's a lot. <laughs> you know, I don't know if you do that after making Bosa the highest paid defensive player in NFL history. Super chat time. Remember, if you want to get on the show, you can super chat like David does. 49ers comeback player of the year on offense and on defense. So he's asking for the 49ers comeback player of the year on offense and on defense. I'm trying to think of guys who were hurt. I would have said Jalen Hurt, <laughs> but, you know. Jarek McKinnon? Jarek McKinnon on offense? Can you be a comeback and player even if you've never been a 49er? even because he's never played in the NFL. I just meant coming off injury. Jarek McKinnon's probably the prime candidate because he's missed two years in a row. Um, say Solomon Thomas I mean, Garoppolo defense, was the guy last year, right? Like, he had a pretty good true. year after not, after not playing defense. Solomon Thomas has never been good, though. I understand. So he can't be comeback player of the year. All right, so, David, I know you're a big-time 49ers fan. Who's the best team in Cali, Chargers, Rams, or the 49ers? I think this one's pretty easy. Um, I'm going to go with the 49ers here. But, I mean, when you really think about it, I mean, the Chargers, two years ago, one of the best teams, or the best team in the AFC West. The Rams were in the Super Bowl just two years ago as well. So, the Cali, a lot, of, a lot of talented teams there. But, no surprise, the vote's coming in for SF. Somebody did get a vote for the San Diego Chargers, so uh, interesting, interesting. Marvin, how good will Teddy be in Carolina? Serviceable. I, I don't think he's a long-term solution for anyone. Great story. Like People are going to be disappointed, I think, with what I, Teddy Bridgewater brings because when, when people see what Teddy did for the Saints, he went 5-0 and and he was productive. I really He I was agree. the perfect fit in that system. There's not it, nearly the amount of talent in the Carolina It's not just Panthers. that he was the perfect fit. It's that he had the ideal coach, the sure. ideal scheme, and the ideal weapons around him. DJ Moore is a nice player. He ain't Michael Thomas. You know, Christian McCaffrey will help with, you know, you know he's a check down quarterback. So that'll, Absolutely. That'll help him, but eh, don't expect Carolina to be, you know, a 9-1 team or something like that. He's serviceable. He's not, you know, great by any. The only thing Tom Downey loves more than Teddy Bridgewater is Manscaped. And if you guys are trying to get the perfect package, you can save 20% off and get free shipping by taking advantage of the offer we have for you. 
Go to manscaped.com slash chat, and what comes in that perfect package? You get ball toner, ball deodorant, which I actually wear the ball deodorant and ball toner every single day to work because I do walk to work, and it's a little bit sweaty here in Texas. The Lawnmower 3.0, the best male grooming tool out there. You can use it on your downstairs. You can use it on your upstairs. Luckily for you, they have replaceable cartridges so you can clean them and you can put a new one on there so you're not shaving your face with what you shave down there. Also, the boxers and the traveling case, they're free when you go to manscaped.com slash chat and get the perfect package. I'm telling you guys right now, it's the best deal out there. 20% off and free shipping. Commander Rex, do you think DJ Moore is a bust? No, no, he's he's really he's, he's, he's the opposite of a bust. He's awesome. He's very good. Uh, next question: Gia, will Cam Newton win Comeback Player of the Year if he leads the Patriots to a ten win season? He's got to be right. Like if Cam Newton comes back healthy <laughs> and leads somewhat of a depleted Patriots team to the playoffs. Isn't he a shoe in at that point? Like I don't even think it's close. So the only other person, and I've seen this, I've seen this around uh, Twitter as producer Dylan shouts it out in the background. Alex Smith. The, look, the Alex Smith story <laughs> is undefeated. It's by far the best story. He's not going to start though. Like yeah. I'd love to see it, but it doesn't make sense for Washington to start him. It okay. makes sense for Dwayne Haskins to be the starter. He, he can't win Comeback Player of the Year just because he's healthy now. Like. I, it's an awesome story. Doesn't fit the award. Okay. Harrison's a hater. Ryan Wilson, what's up? Will Justin Herbert be a franchise quarterback for my Bolts, Chargers? Everybody just talks Joe and Tua. Well, the reason why they talk Joe is because he's going to be the clear-cut starter. Tua, to me, is a much better quarterback than Justin Herbert when fully healthy. I think Herbert's a talented dude. Not many players can say that, hey, I was a starting quarterback in college for four years which he was, battled some injuries in his first two years, was better, I think, as a junior. The thing that scares me with Justin Herbert, though, is I personally don't think he's a leader. I think his ceiling is a Derek Carr. I would have loved to see Justin Herbert when Oregon was slinging it around and running 85 plays per game, but under Mario Cristobal, they became a defensive physical check-down offense team. So kind of, it kind of got weird. So you don't, I don't think we really got to see the full Justin Herbert in college. It's like any first-ranked quarterback, though, right? It's 50-50 whether they pan out. So you got to wait and see. you got to well, see it play out. I've been slinging another round, too, thanks to Manscaped. And you can, too, manscaped.com slash chat. What up, Jeff? Kyler Murray, top five MVP candidate. If you look at the latest odds, he is actually a top five. He's a, fringe top five. I, I believe I, his odds last time I checked were plus 1,200. The Ky Kyler Murray hype season is definitely here. It, he's clearly behind Mahomes and Lamar. Like, I think those are the top two and probably Dak third, but yeah. just because of volume stats and if they make the playoffs. Russell you know, Wilson, Drew Brees, I'll throw in Russell there Russell Wilson well. and Brees. I think after that, he's right there, though. So he's okay. number six guy, number seven. He's close. Super chat time. What's up, Nicholas? Who wins the receiving title this year? I think Adam Thielen and Cooper Cup need more respect on this question. So... Cooper Cup to me, no, he's just not going to get the volume. He's a great red zone option. Adam Thielen was on pace to, I believe, break the reception record. He was right there with Michael Thomas. He also got hurt. So I understand the fact because, you know, Stephon Diggs isn't there anymore. But the Vikings, they want to run the football. Yeah, and I still think that the Rams want to run the football as well. I'm going to say Michael Thomas. The volume's going to be there. I'm not going to go with DeAndre Hopkins, or I'll go with Tyreek Hill. I think Julio has a good chance. He's look, He consistently he puts up 1,500 yards. He just uh, scares me. It, it, if, if the question is receptions, it's Michael Thomas. Yes. He will have the most catches. If it's receiving yards, I'll actually go Julio Jones. Okay, I like it. So shout out the most random NFL player you can think of, Terrell Pryor. Does he even still play? That's what came to my mind. LaRon Robinson. I can't even think of a random player. Just think of a, the most random current, NFL player you can. Current or all time? Jose Cortez. D. Virgin. <laughs> Muhammad Sanu, OBJ, Nathan Peterman, and Max Crosby, Derek Carr. Is Peterman the most popular random player of all time? Nathan Peter is Peter. Uh, Nathan Peterman is the most popular, I feel like, meme quarterback of all time. <laughs> oh, there's no doubt about that. Nathan Peterman also uses Manscaped. You guys can too. Go to Tom Downey Burner account. Appreciate the follow the other day. Eagles have the worst fans in the NFL. I'm going to guess you're a Cowboys fan, judging by the question and judging by your picture. I'm starting to think this is Tom. 
by the way. <laughs> I don't think this has been investigated enough. I think, I think Tom need, isn't here right now. I think we need to look into this more. Um, worst fans in the NFL, just Philadelphia sports fans in general are they're pretty tough. brutal. They're I mean, tough. they're tough on their teams. Um, I mean, your Raiders are got to be up there, right? Like, See, the only thing <laughs> I'll say is they're different. over the top. I, I wouldn't want to be an opposing fan coming into, you know, Vegas or going into, like, the old Coliseum. The issue with Eagles fans are they're brutal to even Eagles players and Eagles fans. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. they're ruthless. I've grew, I grew up in Philly, right near it. They're tough, man. Yep, no doubt. Let's go to Nicholas Falk, Trey Lance to the Raiders in next year's draft. So we actually did a 2021 mock draft probably about two months ago. Tom did. He had Trey Lance we going. We did one way more recent than that, by the way. True, but I, the one that he had Trey Lance going to the Raiders oh, gotcha. was in that one. Okay. So if Trey Lance, 28 touchdowns, zero interceptions last year, yes, he's not – not going to play this Probably year. Probably not going to play, um, you know. The talent is there. And, however, if the Raiders go to the playoffs and Carr plays well, it's a no. If if not, I don't know if the Raiders go out and draft a quarterback. John Gruden has never drafted a quarterback in the first round. The earliest he's ever drafted somebody was 51 overall. We should all we should also make this we should also make this clear though. It, it, if there's no spring season in the FCS, he might go back to college. Yeah. He's a redshirt sophomore. He's going to be a top he 15 needs, pick. Trey, needs, if you're watching, he needs reps. go to the NFL. He needs reps. Go get, I don't go know, get man. paid, man. I'd go back. Go get paid. Last question, unless we get another super chat. So if you want to get your question featured on the show real quick, go ahead and super chat. Ryan Wilson, Melvin Ingram for Joe Tooney. Right side of the offensive line is horrendous. So in Not terms straight of, up. Straight up, no. But in terms of like what each team could potentially use, Actually, don't hate it. Uh, I would say that the Patriots have to throw in another piece there. I'd say Tooney in a third. I'd probably, I think that could work. I'd probably do that for Day both sides, pick. actually. Yeah, uh, I think that makes sense. You get out of Ingram, you don't have to pay him, and you get a long-needed offensive lineman who's steady. Absolutely. Ryan, appreciate the question. If I missed your question, you can always hit me up at MitchellRen365 on Instagram, or you can DM Harrison on Twitter. He's at HGramNFL.